Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So I'm really excited to share with you this video today. Uh, we're going to be going over how to invest in, in, in the stock market. Uh, we'll, we'll look at a couple different accounts. Uh, we'll look at what exactly to look for in stocks and ETFs and mutual funds. So uh, without further ado, let's get straight to it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need an investment account. And there's really two ways you can go about this. Uh, there is a uh, individual retirement account that you can open up. Uh, it, it also stands for IRA. Uh, and there's two types of IRA accounts. There's the Roth IRA and then there's the traditional IRA. The, the Roth IRA is uh, an after-tax account. Uh, so all the money that goes into a Roth is uh, after-tax dollars. And so when you begin to invest, all of the capital gains and, and returns that you'll make on your investments uh, will grow tax free. So when you retire or when you pull the money out uh, in retirement, uh, you won't have to pay any money on the taxes that uh, on the capital gains that you've made. Uh, as for the traditional IRA, this is a pre tax account. So the money goes in pre tax. And so you can invest all, all your money into the traditional IRA. Uh, however, when you retire, and you pull the money out, you will have to pay taxes on all of the money that you've deposited into the accounts and all of the capital gains that you've made on your investments. So uh, you, you want to look at and see, you know, you want to research the Roth IRA and the traditional and see which one uh, is, is best suited for, for you uh, based on your income, based on your current tax rate and your future tax rate. Um, now, aside from the individual retirement account, uh, if you wanted to do uh, an, set up an investment account, that is just a regular investment account. There are no tax benefits. Uh, that's going to be called a brokerage account, and you can open that type of account with the same investment banks that or investment companies that offer uh, IRA accounts. Uh, and so, investment and brokerage account is really uh, just a standard account where you can deposit your money in, uh, and you can pull your money out at, at any time. Uh, however, this account does not have any tax benefits. So, any money that you make on your investments. Uh, you will have to pay taxes uh, on, on your investments. Uh, so those are the two main accounts is you can go with the IRA or you can go with the brokerage account. Okay, so now let's talk about, you know, how do you invest in the stock market? The stock market has uh, a number of investments that you can make. Uh, for example, there are mutual funds. Uh, mutual funds are basically a, uh, think of a basket with, a bunch of different companies and you know you can even throw in government bonds in there uh, so it's it's a basket it's a diversified basket of stocks and bonds and typically mutual funds have a professional fund manager that is actively managing uh, the, these funds for you and so mutual funds are great for the you know the individual that is really busy with their career with their family uh, doesn't have time to research stocks and investments you can pretty much buy these mutual funds and they will pretty much run and manage themselves. Uh, so this is a great tool for beginners. Uh, next, you have stocks. So stocks is a, a little bit more uh, complicated because you now uh, you're in charge of doing all of your research. Uh, stock is basically a, a share uh, of a company. And so when, you, when you're buying stocks, you want to research all the company's financials, their performance, what is their future outlook, what is their business plan. And so it, it requires more research uh, when you're buying stocks versus when you're buying mutual funds. All right, the next one, we have fixed income bonds. These are going to be, uh, you know, such as like uh, government bonds. Uh, but basically, you're buying a certificate where the, the government will give you uh, a certificate that says, hey, you know, let us borrow this money and we'll pay you, you know, X amount of interest on your annual, annual basis. So uh, on the risk pyramid, uh, fixed income bonds and CDs, these are on the lower end of the risk. So you're going to get less return for these investments, but they're also less volatile versus like uh, high risk stocks. So uh, less risk, lower risk than stocks. Uh, next, uh, next up, you have uh, ETFs. ETFs are very similar to mutual funds in the sense that there are diversified baskets of a bunch of different investments, companies. Uh, so another easy way to, to get uh, quick diversification and not have to do a lot of research. The only difference between an ETF and a mutual fund is that an ETF is passively managed. So there's not an active manager that is watching these stocks uh, on, on a daily basis. So, um, you know, in most cases, the ETFs perform just as good, if not better than the mutual funds. And that's because of the, the low cost structure of ETFs. 
um, it, it is cheaper for you to hold an ETF uh, versus holding a mutual fund. And re remember how I mentioned there's a professional fund manager that is managing the mutual fund. Well, that's that fund manager and that investment company that's managing the fund for you is charging you typically, you know, 1% of, of asset uh, that are under managed. So, uh, so they're just expensive. They're more expensive than the ETFs. Uh, so that's all we'll go for uh, in this video. Um, so now let's, let's look at, you know, how you could, uh, if you wanted to invest in some of these stock and uh, investments. So let's start with mutual funds. So we're here on the mutual funds page on the Fidelity platform. Uh, and basically, you know, we can filter a lot of different funds to narrow down our search. As you can see, there's 9,590 funds available. So we're going to want to narrow down the search. Uh, we can go ahead and click asset class and category. And Fidelity will give us uh, a couple different options. So there's allocation funds, there's alternative commodities, international equity, miscellaneous money market. Municipal bonds, non-traditional equity, sector equity, taxable bond, U.S. equity. Uh, so let's take a look at allocation funds. Allocation funds are going to be, um, you know, percentage-based funds such as 15 to 30% equity. Uh, you can take a look at a couple of these funds allocation. Uh, target date funds are really great. Uh, so, for example, if we were to buy a fund in 2021 uh, with a target date of 2050, the, the, the fund will allocate itself automatically every year the closer you get to 2050 and so the the way these funds are, are designed is that in the early years they're a bit they're a lot more aggressive and then as you get closer to the target date let's say 2050 that the mutual fund will allocate to become more conservative so the the fund becomes less volatile uh the the closer you get to the target date uh so you can we can look at some of those uh so for example let's just click allocation uh we'll just select a target date of let's say 2050 and let's go ahead and uh, close this uh, so as you can see the the fund now is 43 funds so we can look at that and fidelity will give you a list of all the different mutual funds that are that have target dates of 50 so we'll look at fidelity freedom 2050 this is a fidelity freedom 2050 the fund uh, there's no transaction fee so you can purchase this fund without any commission cost uh, some of the details here there's a 0.75 percent expense ratio which is relatively low uh, there is a zero dollar minimum required to invest so you can buy this fund with as little as you know five ten twenty dollars or, or more uh, you know pretty pretty good rating four star rating uh, you know above average returns, um, average expense, as you, as you see, there's, you know, it's, it's currently at, on the, on the medium to higher end of the risk uh, scale here. You can see some performance based returns. So you can see how, how this fund has performed the last 10 years, 11%, the last five years, it's done 14%, uh, the last three years, it's done 17%. And then, you know, year to date, 16%. Uh, in terms of allocation, you see this fund is 51% uh, allocated in U.S. equities, U.S. stocks, U.S. companies, 41% uh, non-U.S. equities. So I can imagine this is international stocks, 6% bonds, uh, you know, and some information on the fund manager here. So if you wanted to do some research on, on the fund managers, uh, this gives you an over, o overall uh, summary of the, the fund, the, the strategy, the, the risk, and you can see, you know, you get some more information on the funds. So, again, mutual funds are great. Uh, you know, if you don't have a lot of time to research stocks, you know, all the work is pretty much done for you. Uh, and you can buy these, these uh, mutual funds. So, okay, now let's move on to... Uh, ETFs. So as I mentioned earlier, you know, ETFs are very similar to mutual funds. The only difference is these are not actively managed. These are passively managed. Uh, and typically they're, they're, they're structured in a way to track uh, a certain type of index. So you'll see a lot of ETFs that could be tracked to say the S&P 500 um, and they will do just as well as the index. So, you know, a, a more passive approach uh, requires a little bit more research and managing than the mutual funds, uh, but still a great option for, for people who are really busy with their careers, with the families. Uh, just a great way to get some uh, instant diversification in your portfolio. 
So a couple of different routes you can go with ETFs. Uh, you know, Fidelity has their own Fidelity funds. They have some iShare funds as well. You can search ETFs by market capitalizations, uh, different industries and sectors. There's ETFs that are specifically for fixed income, bonds. Uh, there are ETFs for, you know, social responsible uh, uh, um, causes. And there's just a plenty of a lot of tools you can go through here. So if you wanted to search for a market cap, it'll give you a couple different options. You can go U.S. multi-cap, so you get an ETF that has small, medium, and large size companies. You can do one that's specifically just for large companies. There's one for middle sized companies, and there's one for small uh, small companies. You can also go global, so U.S. and international, um, from all 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 cap sizes. Uh, and so just just keep in mind that, you know, the, the bigger the company I, or I should say the smaller the company, the more risk. And then as uh, obviously, as you go to middle sized companies and more established large companies, it becomes less risk. Uh, so you could just do like a multi, you know, you could you could do some research and just select one of these. And, you know, we could look at multi cap. And Fidelity will give us a, a list of all of these different. So as you see, the research is not as as um, up, up front. Uh, as the mutual funds, you have to do a little bit of research on these funds. You know, this first one that comes up is Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Funds. So it requires a little bit more research. But again, all of these ETFs are diversified baskets of, of, of stocks. And and also looks like you could find some, some bond ETFs as well. Okay. Now, lastly, let's go over to stocks. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier in the video, stocks will require a lot more industry. This is where you get you know, more specific on the type of sector that you want to invest in, the industries, the company performance, financials, business plan outlook. And so it takes a little bit of time to research what type of industry you wanted to uh, 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 invest in. And you can, you know, you don't, you can invest in multiple industries if you like. Um, and, you know, you can invest, you can basically create your own diversified basket of, of stocks that you think will outperform the market. Um, okay, so let's just take a, for example, let's just take a, a look here. Um, let's say we wanted to invest in some consumer discretionary uh, stocks. We can, it'll take us to this page when we can search by industry and it'll give you, you know, specific industry returns. So we have auto components in this uh, consumer discretionary. We have automobiles, distributors, hotels, uh, household durables, multi-line retail. Uh, if you wanted just to get a broad range of investments, you would just click find investments and you could search all of the stocks uh, within this sector. Um, so let's go back to industry and we'll just do a quick sample run on some of these industries. So let's just go to the automobile industry. Uh, you see that in the last five years, this industry has done 53 percent. Uh, hotel restaurant leisure has done 70, 77 percent in the last five years. Internet and direct marketing retail has done 319, so you can get a general sense on how these industries have been performing in the past five, one to five years. And so let's just say we're interested in investing in the automobile or, or hotel restaurant industry. Uh, we can select find investments. Well, let's go back to the snapshot really quick and see what Fidelity uh, offers here on this page. So in the industry fundamentals, this is a good. Uh, 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 now, uh, these are good metrics to uh, take into your analysis, so you can get a sense on how a company is doing compared to the industry. So industry fundamentals, uh, these metrics will give you an idea of how the industry is doing. So from a price to earnings perspective, uh, the industry is trading at about an average of seventy times earnings. So that just gives you a sense when you look at these stocks, you're going to see stocks that have higher P ratios than 70 or lower. And so it, it's something you want to look at uh, in, ter in terms of figuring out how the company is valued. Uh, revenue growth, you know, trailing 12 months versus the last prior tr uh, trailing 12 month, 15% uh, revenue growth in the last 12 months, which is pretty, pretty good. Uh, return on equity, 9%. Return on investment, negative 1%. Okay, so now we can look at the individual stocks, go to find investments. We're going to hit view, uh, view all results. And we're going to go and get a list of all the different stocks in this in this industry. So there's a lot of stocks and it's a lot of research. This could take a lot of time to, to find good companies. 
uh, and you can sort them out however you like. You know, typically if we're sorting through market capitalization, uh, we're going to get the bigger and larger companies uh, first so we can look at. And remember, as I mentioned earlier in the video, the larger the company, you know, the less risk, the, the smaller the company, the lower, the, the higher risk. And you, and you can also speed up your research by some of by this ESS from Starmine from Ref, Refinitiv. Uh, you see that a lot of these stocks have neutral ratings, bearish ratings. Uh, neutral rating means, you know, the, the company is expected to go in line with the market, perform in line with the market. Uh, bearish rating is analysts are uh, pessimistic about the stock and they believe the stock will underperform the market. And when I say the market, typically they're referring to uh, the S&P 500. Then there's bearish, bearish, obviously very negative outlook. And then, you know, if you can come across some companies that are bullish, uh, that means that analysts are optimistic and believe these stocks will perform better than the, the, the market. So let's take a look at this stock here. This is a medium sized company uh, with the $8.4 billion capitalization. Um, they, ha they have a bullish rating and it looks like this is uh, Choice Hotels International, which is a common stock. So let's click on the ticker here, CHH. And we should get be able to see some information here. So looks like they're, uh, they got a bullish rating. They're a hotel restaurant business. Uh, looks like they do hotel franchising. Um, looks like it franchises lodging properties under the brand names of Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites. Okay, so they're a hotel operator and they operate um, a variety of hotel brands. And they're based out of, I believe they're based out of the U.S. Uh, just scroll down here. Yeah, so they're based out of Rockville, Maryland. Uh, you know, you get the, you, you can see their competitors. Um, so let's go straight to key statistics. And when you're looking at stocks, you can look at the metrics here. So in, in terms of valuation, uh, they have a P ratio of 36 uh, to 35. And if you remember, the industry as a whole has a 70 um, times P ratio. Uh, the, the hotel industry, however, has a 57 times P ratio. So from a P perspective, these, this stock is trading at a lower price to earnings. So you could you could potentially consider this as an undervalued stock. Uh, a peg ratio is is a metric that that tells you how the company is meeting its growth expectations. And typically, if you can find a company that has a peg ratio of one, uh, this this company is doing really well uh, and it's meeting expectations. So right off the bat, uh, there's some really nice metrics to look at, at uh, like about this company already. Uh, from a price to sales uh, perspective, uh, it's trading at 8.5 times compared to the industry of 9.5. So I always like to invest in, in companies that have, uh, you know, a, a reasonably low P ratio. Um, I, that doesn't mean that I don't invest in high P, P, uh, high P ratio stocks, um, but I do like to compare with the peg ratio to make sure they're meeting the growth expectations on an earnings per share. And then also I like to get uh, as low as possible price to sales. Um, typically, uh, companies that are trading that have a higher price to sales compared to the industry average uh, tend to be overvalued. So uh, I, I do like this company already. Um, in terms of growth, the, the first thing I look at is revenue growth from the last five years, 2% compared to the industry average of negative 2%. So th this may be uh, this data may be skewed. Obviously, with the pandemic, you know there was a huge the, the hotel industry took uh, had a really was very ne negatively impacted by the coronavirus and the pandemic. Uh, a lot of hotels shut down, so they lost a lot of sales revenue. Uh, their forward earnings per share long term growth rate is is thirty six compared to the industry of eighty. Um, you know, so this gives you a, a general idea of of what to look for. So you mainly mainly want to look for. Uh, you know, what is the last five years revenue growth? You know, what is the future earnings per share growth rate? And you can see how this company is performing based on growth. In terms of performance and profitability, profit margins, uh, this company has a 30% profit margin compared to the industry of negative negative 56%. So 
from a profit margin standpoint, this company is outperforming the hotel industry. And then from returns, we have 20% return, uh, return on investment, 30% return on assets, and 281% return on equity. So really great returns uh, for this company. And now, lastly, you know, you get a sense of the balance sheet. Uh, you know, you want to look at how much debt a company has. Uh, and it, it, it may appear as if this company is holding uh, is, is relatively high leverage compared to the industry. Um, well, let's see. The hotel industry has 70, 72% debt to assets. So the hotel industry is highly leveraged, I would say. Um, so that's another thing that you have to consider is uh, typically a company that's highly leveraged uh, tends to be more, more on the risk side because they have this obligation to pay back their, their lenders and their creditors. Um, so it's something that you should consider in your, in your analysis is if you're comfortable with a company that's highly leveraged. Highly le- high, uh, leveraged can work both ways. You know, If the economy is doing well and the business is doing well, it will achieve greater financial returns. But it's also uh, vice versa. If, if the economy goes to a downturn or the company, uh, something negative happens in the company, then you're going to see those those uh, losses uh, greater when, when the company has more leverage. Uh, from a balance sheet and cash perspective, current ratio, this company has 1.56 uh, current ratio. So it looks like this company has, you know, good amount of cash in the balance sheet to, to be able to meet their short-term obligations. So that's that, that gives you a sense of what you want to look at when you go into individual stocks. So, so there you have it, guys. Uh, you know, hope this video was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave comments down below. Questions, and and you know, happy to to continue uh, this you know communication and, and learn more about you know teach you how to invest in the market, get more familiar with with stocks and what to look for. And yeah, feel free if you have any questions. Uh, I look forward to speaking to you guys in the next video. Thank you.